So, hello, I'm Nick Gerard, and I'm going to show you how to use Insta360 Studio 2020. Wow. This is fall after fall. I'm not afraid of heights. Go to insta360.com, downloads, the 1x, and scroll down to Insta360 Studio 2020. Then you're going to download this file here, accept it. It's pretty large, it's at 300 uh, megabytes, so it might take a second. Uh, so I have it downloaded. Um, you know what, I'll just pretend to reinstall, so that's going to be pretty quick. Um, this software allows you to use Insta360's proprietary file format. Uh, they do that because video didn't have uh, gyroscope information before, uh, so it helps them uh, orient the video up and down so that it matches um, what you'd see in real life. So yeah, I want to install all of these. It's very useful stuff. Okay, we're going to launch. And something useful is going to the bottom bar here, if you're on a PC, and just pinning out the taskbar. So you always have access to it. Um, this is not necessary if you go through, if you say back up all your files and you go through Premiere and you use that stitching method. All right. So we're going to open um, where our files are. Okay. So we'll select that folder. That was the folder where hopefully you have backed up uh, what is on your camera. And now you have all this. Uh, if you've backed up everything on your camera, you might need 100 gigabytes. You might need you know, 200 to do the whole production. Um, so if you don't want to go about backing up everything, you can simply edit from the camera if you want to just do it all in one go, but I'd highly recommend backing it up somewhere. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're in Insta360 uh, Studio 2020. So great things you can do with Insta360 Studio 2020 is filter between photos and videos. It's actually a nice feature that they recently added. Um, you can also make sure that your stabilization is good, that you know you have all the file info you want. Um, to, let's just make it really simple, I suppose. And I'll just show you. That'll be useful for you, by the way, if you want to stitch with less compression. Okay, this whole page that pops up from that tutorial will be useful if you want to stitch with less compression, okay? That's why you keep the original files. So here's me in Yellowstone. I have, you know, a mask on and everything, so don't worry. But I got worried for sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, try to get a cool, like, rising shot. You're going to deal with less than that. You're going to deal with, like, tripod shots mostly. So we'll show you a tripod shot instead. Okay, I favorited this one because... It's pretty awesome. It's it's this waterfall shot. There's nothing around besides nature. It's beautiful. Here, I'll make this big one. It's beautiful. Right? And we could just sit and relax in VR. And we're not going to be dizzy at all because 
look, we've got this stable base. So nothing's gonna, you know, trip up anyone in virtual reality. They'll feel like maybe they're sitting in a chair or that they're a little shorter if they're tall or perfect height if they're short. <laughs> All right, so we've got our video, it's working. So you can see a lot of different settings here, right? This would be useful if it did what it said, but it doesn't. It locks the direction it attaches to the direction the camera is facing and like with software slowly moves it. I don't like it. For VR, we leave lock direction off. It looks like it's a little sideways, so maybe this was really necessary. Um, okay, yeah, a few things. You can change uh, the view. Just as, This is just for you, you know, when you're deciding how you want to look at this. This is called Tiny Planet. I love it. Uh, this is Crystal Ball. But, you know, th those are just, you know, fun views. But this is how, like, you would see it. Um, just the raw footage without any interpretation. This is stretched up here. And it, through some complex math, or relatively low CPU overhead math, um, you can make this look like a sphere that's surrounding the viewer and teleport them to wherever you filmed. I love it. It's like photons in and photons out. You know, you, you get you get like like you're there. So yeah, that's that's that. Um, if you wanted to just export one, you'd press this button up here, start export. Um, you can leave that as is. Looks like that's the default. If it's dark, you can press that, it's going to take a little longer. Um, and then, yeah, make sure your, your path where this is going has enough space. So this gives you an estimated size. It's 4.3 gigabytes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty big, right? And that's just for, what, like three minutes of footage. So you're going to have to have some storage. Um, if you're seeing this at the beginning of the semester, you're probably going to want to buy an external hard drive, or what I like is an external SSD, because that allows you to uh, edit a lot faster. It's the better technology, it's lower energy, um, and it also is super fast. So if you get an uh, external SSD, they're about like $200, uh, get like a f one gig one. Um, so yeah, now you've got your footage. You decide, hmm, I don't like what I said earlier. You know, maybe we'll include that later. But we can find the point where we are out of the frame. I'll be over there. So find the point where I'm out of the frame. And you just tuck yourself nicely into the foliage there, Nick. Good job. All right. So now <laughs> you're off in that corner. And you go, okay, that's where the video starts. Um... And you can, you know, edit it a little shorter. In doing this, this step right here, um, you could do it later in Premiere if you want. But I've been instructed to give you a Insta360 tutorial. I'm going to take out me maybe speaking at the end. Let's see if I don't like it. There's a... Mm, don't know. Don't know about that, Nick. Myself and I. All right, so we'll take that off. Right there. Ta-da! And get rid of yourself. <laughs> so now we've got our clip, uh, and we can keep it like this. I think if we go to another clip and we come back to it, it's still cut that way, right? So that's good. Um, here's some other, so here's something very useful. Uh, if you want to change your view in here to see more material, you can, you know, more of what's around in the shot without having to drag around. You can change uh, to fisheye view. Uh, if you go to, def it's the de default, basically. Uh, if you want to get a view that you'd get from 2D free capture, you would use this natural view. Um, and you can see free capture right here. I'll let you do that. 
Uh, and you, it looks like you have a wide-angle lens, right? It doesn't look like you have a 360 camera if it's just fixed in one spot. You can make a really peaceful video. You can reframe things. I like all these tools. So what's time shift do, right? Time shift lets you speed things up, maybe slow things down. So you can speed it up here if you wanted to, if you were doing like a walk cycle, you just wanted to speed up the footage. Um, I don't like to be so destructive with my editing. I like to do all my editing in Premiere. Um, and that might mean just selecting the footage I need and like figuring out which which uh, of these I need. Sometimes if I have enough file space, you know, storage space, I'll just render all of them or like, you know, leave out the ones, maybe delete the ones that are just like test shots, right? That was just four seconds of a test shot. I don't need that. You just remove it. Um, but if you like something, you know, and you want to keep it around like this shot right here, I love, right? It's, it's the one I've been showing you. So I'm going to favorite that. And now it's in your favorites. So you can go back to videos. Um, I have photos too. But you can go back to videos. Go back to that video. It's a little, it kind of scrolls a little bit there. And you can do a lot of interesting things though. I still need to demo so many different uh, features. Uh, you've probably been wondering about what all this is. Um, you don't really have to touch this too much uh, if you just want to do VR. Uh, you could leave lock direction off. It actually does the opposite of what it says. Um, lock direction locks onto things like yourself uh, or which direction the camera is turned. Um, and you actually want flow state stabilization. Uh, flow state is like... Um, it's something jugglers, I've heard jugglers use, to say it when they're flowing, when they're in the flow, or skateboarders, you know, everything just works. They're really good with their skill. Well, they've used that name to say this is um, good stabilization. It's basically up and down along the axis of gravity. Uh, it uses the gyroscope to, you know, figure out what up and down is. And so you can turn the camera in whatever way you want, and it's actually really cool. Uh, this camera is super useful for creating, like, moving shots, and that's something that is an amazing feature. Now, is it great in overcast weather? Uh, no. So this is overcast shot. It There are some really good pieces of this footage, but it if, you know, I turn the camera too far or I move forward too fast, you can see some blurring um, happening. And that's what you want to avoid, but it looks like most of all, mostly, this is salvageable, like, this is pretty good footage. If I were to do this through batch exporting, let's say I find the next one. But what you would do if you were going to batch export, you could just go, you know, I don't want to go through trimming all these. I have a lot of hard drive space. I'm going to press the first one, press shift, uh, and that'll select all. And then you can right click or command click, I assume. You could also probably just press File, Batch, Export. Um, and then that, use Auto Calculation. Original, it basically just keep all this as is. If you have a lot of space, you could do that, or a lot of processing power, but you probably don't. Um, if it's really dark scenes where you're filming, you can do this, remove grain. It removes the static of uh, purple and green. You want flow state stabilization on if you have any moving shots. Actually, just always keep this on because it, it keeps the camera up and down perfectly. Good for VR. You don't want people leaning over. Do not turn on lock direction because that follows the direction the camera is facing and that can vary. And don't use a logo because we don't need to promote. They're a great company. We're going to promote their cameras, but we don't need to put that there because... <coughs> This camera is perfect. Uh, it doesn't even have a stitch. If you look, okay, I'll show you later. But if you look under, there's no, there's no stitch area that needs to be covered. Okay, so this says it's gonna put it back where we saved our footage, right? You probably want to separate the renders from. I mean, if you can, if you want more performance, you can put it on a different hard drive. That works a lot better. It's faster. Um, but yeah, by default, it would stick it in 
with the original files you saved off of your camera, or the uh, it would actually stick it onto the camera. Um, you know, it would stick it onto the camera directly if you didn't do the import. So make sure when you're batch exporting, if you're going to do that method, that you uh, put it on a different hard drive. I think I like it here. So I'm just going to put it in with demo export. Let's call this demo export 2. Um, and there we go. So now that's where we're going to put it. Okay, that's where the files are going to be. Remember that location. Um, if you are not going to do the Premiere Stitch method, this is the way to do it so that you can edit in other uh, non-compatible uh, editors. So there you go. And now, boom, it's exporting all of my footage. I've already done this, though. Um, Oh no, you know, I think I had it unlocked last time. So I'll just let this run. This needs to run like all night though. So I'll see you in the morning. I recommend, um, you know, selecting which exact pieces of footage you want, exporting those. This uh, bulk method uh, takes way too much time, but you can leave it for a while. Oh, and I forgot every time a file finishes by default, it makes a cute little success sound. So if you want to change that, um, you can go into settings, preferences, and you can turn off that little annoying sound. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna turn that off. Um, yeah, this is privacy too. You can turn that off if too if you want. Um, this is great. Do not turn this up. You'll crash. Um, yeah. So I canceled my export there, I think, right? So, oh no. Well, you can just export again. And it'll just overwrite the, the one file that you had there. So, oh well, you wasted some time. But there, there you go. Oh look, it actually remembered that we finished that one. So that's nice. <sighs> hmm. Well... Before we do that, before we wait all night to see if these turn out well, since we can just resume it, I'm going to cancel that, and I'm going to go, sorry, that probably got looked complicated, but I'm just going to the, the thing that worked. Uh, okay, so, sorry I ramble a lot, uh, but yeah, now we have gone through some interesting things you can do in Insta360 Studio. 2020. Um, okay, so now we've pressed this button, which was auto frame, and the artificial intelligence gave us some automatic frames. Uh, so there, it gives you multiple options basically, and you can choose the one that frames yourself. And this kind of lets you, like, be part of the story. You could. Maybe have a narration of what you're saying uh, about like a certain story while you're traveling the city, and you could be like a part of it trying to find the facts, right? So this this actually works pretty well. So in the end, maybe I choose this, and this orients the whole 360 sphere. So you know you don't really need it. Uh, like you could, I think just. Could export that if you wanted you know you could start an export and call it something a little unique like lock me lock on me and you know start it um, but this is gonna it'll just queue in the exports and it's all the way at the bottom uh, one of the most important tools for making 2D content um, is being able to use free capture. So this isn't just a 360 camera for VR. It's also a 360 camera for 2D video, right? And that's what we're going to show off here. So what you can do 
is you can place it where you want the camera initially. Um, you can create a keyframe and then you can create another keyframe facing this way. And what this will do, oh yeah, you have to move forward in time, excuse me. So we'll move forward to when um, it's up and it, it stops moving because we don't want the motion to be too weird. So maybe just a little further back here. So here's our first keyframe, right? We we're facing down the river. Then we'll do our next keyframe at the end of this, facing up the river, like so. And now it'll blend between those two keyframes. Or at least it should. Yeah, there we go. It did it a little too fast, right? Oh, okay. Beginning keyframe, we're gonna set again, it's here. And now, so the first one is set down facing that way. The second one is set facing this way, see? So now we have an awesome panning video. And I'm even in the corner here. So if I don't wanna be in the corner uh, and I wanna change this, this keyframe, what I can do is shift it, right? So now I've reprogrammed the keyframe essentially. I can even do something crazy like decide I want a tiny planet view here and then it'll shift from tiny planet to a view of the waterfall, which is visually impressive to say the least, right? Um, so you could like choose maybe a different view that's a little less um, crazy. Or you could like make an illustrative video like this that shows it's 360. And there we go. So that's useful for 2D videos, right? Um, you can also change it to one to one ratio for say like Instagram. And let's say I want to be the star of the show. I could change the keyframe to face me a little more in the beginning. I think you get the idea here. Um, so that's not for VR, right? Just being clear. Uh, then when we're maybe in another video, you know, we're in this walk cycle video, uh, maybe we want to lock direction. So that locks the direction the camera is facing. Say one lens is facing this way. It locks one lens is facing a certain way. So it looks like we're off to the side. So what if we do that? Perfect. So this uh, filming technique works. You know, you have to hold the camera uh, facing the same way. Uh, but it will slowly pan. It won't immediately pan with the camera's motion, which is really nice to get kind of smooth uh, things that face your subject that are controlled by your hand. <laughs> so I think we can cut it there. So maybe from this bend here. Maybe from here, because it's so cool after. So that works with lock direction. And if you hold the camera on a selfie stick, uh, this is good for 2D shots that you want to produce for social media, etc. Set to work. 
All right. And then we would just export that, um, or we could put it in our favorites. And now we've got that added to our favorites. Um, yeah, so that it kind of completes the uh, motion thing. And I guess I'll just show you time shift. We could speed it up and so that this is just a little bit easier for someone on social media to watch, right? So time shift plus lock direction. And you could export that. So yeah, uh, just I thought it would be useful since I'm teaching journalists here how to use this uh, for making your own shots. But Insta360 in this class, we're going to be trying to just use this view, not free capture. All right, but you know I hope you can utilize that for a fun project later. Insta360 Studio 2020. It's good for making clips. It's good for interpreting the footage when you don't have a lot of um, stuff, but it's it's not, it can be a little weak. Like it's good for basic creation. Um, but what I like to do, instead of using Insta360 Studio, is using Premiere. Now, maybe this is a little daunting, right? It's, it's Adobe Premiere, but you probably used it before, right? So we've already created a new project, but I'll just do this for you. Uh, you create it named VR uh, 360 demo, and you can press OK. Uh, all these should be, you know, same as project. Um, you probably want this to be like your main SSD and not like a hard drive. Um, and you press OK. So import. Uh, you could choose what you want to import. I want to import. Insta360 footage. Um, we'll just pull one off of off of here, and we'll make it a small one just so that it works. So yeah, let's pick uh, like a light video, just so we can get this to work quickly. So it's a really quick video. Okay, it's maybe something where I was like, eh, I don't like that shot. So a little something better. Okay, so let's say that. So now we've got this equilateral video. <laughs> Look at this alien shape. Uh, so I'll teach you a few things right now uh, that you're gonna like. So you, see how this is automatically stitched? That's amazing. It's not just um, one side. This This river right here, this is this. It goes, falls into that. See? So this is a perfect sphere, like a world map. Um, and you can toggle VR video display by pressing this button and look around. And it's VR. Okay? But that might, this button might not be there for you. So if it's not, you press this plus button, this one. Toggle VR video display. There's a whole bunch of interesting tools here, but this is the one that means the most to us. And we're going to need that here too. So while, while you're setting that up, just we need to be able to see things in 360. It's just, it's what we're going to do. And you can take your mouse in the center of this and drag it around. And if you want to see what forward looks like for the viewer, this is what forward looks like. I don't like this this angle, right? But let's just say we use this footage, pull it in. Yes, I definitely want to change the sequence settings. So that changed it so that now we are set up to use Insta360 uh, footage. I look like an alien in this. So. I always do, geez. No, so <laughs> you want to be looking forward, right? And maybe you want that not to be 
your face when you start it. Uh, so yeah, normally you'd walk away, right? Here there's just the shortest clip we could find. So let's say we don't want to look this way, right? Well, what we do is we want an effect to change it. Um, this isn't going to work at all, though, because the problem is if you're rotating this, you're rotating that, and that does not work, right? So what you want to do, we'll set that back to 100. Uh-oh. We'll set that to zero. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in a new effect. So go to effects if you want. Uh, you could also, pretty sure you can find the window in here uh, if you can't find it. What I like to do is sometimes just go through that, click that. Um, you can save workspaces. That's useful if you want to save the way the screen is laid out because you can change all these, right? Uh, but what we want is this thing, which I've somehow slid over there. And sometimes it'll happen. Things will hide. And if that's happening, um, you can, you know, just change it. I don't like my face in this. This is going on the damn web. All right. So you can change this to effects. You can go to um, effects. This is really important here, okay? You go to video effects, immersive video. This is gonna be very important to us. Um, and VR plane to sphere is gonna be important too. But what we want is to rotate, right? We wanna turn away from this face. So we will drag VR rotate sphere on here, go into effect controls, if you can't find that, it's um, it's there. Window that, and uh, you go to the effect VR rotate sphere, and you tilt the Y axis. That's the up and down axis. Uh, around and lo and behold, boom! It's it's doing it. It's 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 rotating. So here in this case, right, we'd want to move away from the person. And we'd want to set that as forward. So this is what the user will see when they are facing forward. Pretend I'm not here in this. I got better footage. There's left, right, and right. And see this, this thing down here? You want that to always be at zero when you're trying to figure out where you want this, okay? This too. This one gets, this one can mess you up. So what you want to do is make sure that this is at zero and zero and then you're facing directly forward level you know along what is it called um like the vanishing point right you're looking along the horizon that's it so then uh you can create your film from a bunch of clips so let's assume we've got this clip, right? Maybe we'll, we'll probably just pull in some other good ones. Um, I think I already exported one that I liked. This bin, by the way, this is not this is not the bin I was trying to show you. Yeah, uh, this should also be here. And we can import a lot, right? Normally you want to import everything you've exported. It'll be in a big folder just like this. Um, we can completely skip. If you have a powerful enough computer, that is, you can completely skip um, using uh, Insta360 Studio 2020. That bit um, tells it that it is 0 and 1, right? These are the two that are the same. So if you import one of these, the other will come. You don't have to worry about selecting it. And if you select both, it'll just import it as one, so you don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> so now we've got the file. 
And that, I don't like this forward as, as forward, but I'm pretty sure this is the eruption of Old Faithful. Yeah. So this is when I went to Yellowstone, just wanted to see how this would work out. So, okay, 126.9. So we'll zero that out, zero this out. Uh, we'll pull it in. Okay, so we want VR rotate sphere, right? So we, we went into effects, immersive, uh, no, effects, video effects, immersive video, VR rotate sphere. And then we dragged it onto this clip. You have to do that for each clip in order to control it uh, with this tool. So I'm going to drag it on. Now it popped up, right? You, you can drag the Y axis left and right and make sure these are zeroed out, right? And ta-da, we're looking at Old Faithful. So now you can press play on your sequence and look look at it and see it's not even giving me any frames per second okay now it is but that can be a problem if you have a um, maybe a computer without a good video card and that's why I also taught you how to export this if I <laughs> manage to mess up the footage uh, from before we'll just go really quickly through this again okay so you pick some footage you like, hopefully on a tripod. Let's say, um, let's see. So we've got this footage. I like it. You can clip it a little shorter if you want it to be like perfect. Um, but remember, you'll lose those frames uh, in Premiere. And so you've got that. Um, you can export and this doesn't actually need to be that high. Uh, and you can export it like this. You can, you can just give it 160. Um, and you can export it like this and make sure you know where it's going. You probably don't want it to go in the origin folder. And OK. And if it's dark, remove grain, right? Well, you're going to want to have, you're going to have more than one uh, thing that you're going to put in there. So let's just figure out another file. So we'll, we'll choose this file, we'll favorite it, um, maybe edit it a little bit. This is one of the LUTs, L-U-T's, <laughs> that do. <laughs> so then, oh God, it's just stuck like that. No one told me. Come on, hon, tell me got this hair okay so you export both of these at once by selecting them both um, or as many as you have right hold shift and you can select all on a list if you select the first one hold shift select the second uh, then you can batch export and you can if it's dark remove grain don't select lock direction do select flow state um, if you have a tripod you don't like, you could use a logo, maybe just something black instead. Um, and yeah, you will just export it to like a folder you like and bam, boom. If I were to press okay, that would start, uh, two files rendering, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to do my favorite way, which is new legacy title. And then you, you call it something. You don't want the names to be the same. So let's call this Old Faithful. And we can just name it what it is. And then Control-A or Command-A, Control-C or Command-C, right? You, then you just got it. And you can... Place this right in the middle. You want to make it big. Control A. Um, 300. Sure. And you want to center it. 
as much as you can, really. You want to center everything you're going to change in VR. Because once you... I'll, I'll try to explain it by just showing. So <coughs> let's just make this really long so it, it really drives home the point. So old faithful. So we want this to be centered. Uh, some nice things you can do is center with these buttons. Boom. Perfectly centered. You don't have to. Okay, well. You might have to worry about that. See? So you make the box just perfectly fit the words. Then you center it with these two tools. These transform center tools. And there it is. Okay? So now you have to drag that in from this area in your bin. Um, or in your files. And you have this on here. And oh no! It's covering. You know, so much of the screen. What do I do? It's surrounding me, in fact, right? So what you do is you use that VR plane to sphere tool. You drag that on. It's an effect. It's an immersive video. Something that's useful is actually just typing <laughs> immer and immersive things will come up. Um... But yeah, VR Plane to Sphere. Oh yeah, in here, if you try to find anything and you just know it, what it's called. Boom, right? So you can find it that way. Uh, so we drag that in. I actually drag, drag that on twice. So I'm going to delete one by pressing the delete key. Okay, so now we have Old Faithful scaled in VR to what it was in this frame. See, remember how it was going from here to here? Now see what's going from here to here? That's kind of, right? It kind of fits. Um, this window, it, it kind of scaled to the window. Not only did it do that, but it kind of made, it not kind of, it did make this a 3D object that goes into the distance on this side, comes closer in the center, and goes in the distance on that side. And that's something useful I like. Um, you'll see, oh, maybe there's trouble reading it because of the color. So you could go into the graphic. We'll change it to what we actually want it now that we've illustrated that point. Um, we can change it to maybe a better font. I think for this, yeah, that looks like old print, right? It looks like it's settling the west some kind of print all right and the reason we can't change this is because we've we've made this box pretty small so we can give it a little more leeway if we want to edit this give it a little bit more space and remember you can always drag these i just like whole numbers like i don't like 391 i like 400 um then you can shrink this you can center it again, put it back on there, and oh no, it kind of isn't readable still. Well, with VR Plane to Sphere, we get some very useful tools. Uh, best of all, I think, is Rotate Projection. So, do we want on the x-axis, that's left and right? No. Do we want on the y-axis, up, up and down? Maybe? No. Do we want it on the x-axis? Yes. So look at that. Oh, look how readable that is. Okay, so it's going to be a lot better. And when you're viewing this in virtual reality, you'll thank yourself for scaling up. Now, is Old Faithful as close as I want it to be? No, because they don't allow you to get much closer. But is it a decent video? Yeah. One thing you'll run into though, because I drug in this video in its raw Insta360 format, my computer is doing a lot of work to try to stitch this together. So what you can do is scale the video down and you can see previews a lot faster. In fact, 
I don't know what's going on. I think something's happening here. And it's, yeah, it's, it's just Premiere. Oh, well, I'm recording video right now, so that might affect it a little bit. But, you know, you can... And I'm playing this off of a hard drive. That's an old school hard drive. It's not an SSD. Um, so, you know, one fourth resolution. That's still like 1080p. You know, it's not great in 360, but it's perfect for editing, right? Because we just need a frame rate. We need to understand what is happening where. And we can just kind of work with that, right? Especially if it's just this, you know, corner. Right? Like, you can't really... It doesn't really matter. And let's just go to the beginning of that again. Oh. Let's go to the beginning of that. <coughs> That's about 40 feet high. So, not as spectacular as I'd hope. Not as close, you know. But at least I didn't die of... Uh, Scalding water, so that's good. Boom, Old Faithful. Now, another thing you'll probably do in this course is try to make those transitions a little better. Um, so the main transition I'm going to use, because I'm not making, you know, video for a smartphone. I'm making video for people who are in VR headsets. Okay, so I want... Um, video transitions and they made all these crazy ones that are like kind of fun light leaks is the most fun if you've got like a rock video or something you know but honestly it's it's a little much it's like you need to okay another thing with transitions too is if you're making a transition you need to have some frames to use in that transition or else it only transitions one side this is a film effect. It's fun for an action video, but it doesn't really fit, you know, thoughtful, slow video. What you want in your VR video, oh, hello, what you want is just a normal video transition, just a dip to black. I love that because it lets people know, okay, you're going to go to a different place now. And this is the dip to black that's made for cinema and film. It's a little too fast. It doesn't really say, hey, that's the end. Here's the beginning. So we're going to give it a little more, uh, some more frames to work with. Because I, it's that cut wasn't long enough at the end of that. And uh, now you can see what it looks like with more frames. Okay. I'll wait till it renders. Now you can see what it looks like with more frames. I'm gonna wait for it to catch up there. Uh, it, you know, it darkens, it dips to black, and it brightens up. Still not long enough for me. I like like two or three second dip to black. I This was like a four second clip we wanted to play around with, so. This is not going to be illustrative of how it looks um, on your video. The clip that's here, this will probably be way bigger, right? So, dip to black, and they'll, they'll understand, ah, I'm moving to a new place, right? So, this is the disadvantage of uh, not using, you know, batch export. Um, this is the disadvantage of, you know, not putting all this processing power into this part where you batch export because even with a good computer, with Premiere, it's still going to take up a lot of processing power. But the benefit will be increased fidelity with the same resolution. That is, no information will be thrown away in compressing it two times. So, you know, you can decide how patient you are. I am this patient. I want everything to look like it's professional. Okay, so Old Faithful. I think this needs to go a little closer, right? You can not, not dip to black. You actually want to cross dissolve effects. Uh, 
you just cross dissolve in and then it'll cross dissolve out and then you've got your, your text title so just to review you go to file new legacy title you choose a title a unique title um, then you choose what you want in there um, if you don't want to go through creating a new you know you could create it anywhere you can go blah you know my favorite um, thing from arrested development is Bob la 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 log I'm sure that's how my voice sounds at this point blah blah blahs la blah, blah. <laughs> so what you want to do is put that up at you know a good much bigger size uh, you want that to be something that fills the frame uh, and this is useful for when you convert this uh, uh, ha, 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 center center and see the problem here go to the selection tool I think it's a no it's V yeah V is the hotkey for that you can just tighten it up there Tighten it up there, center, center, and then you throw that where you want it, and it's too big, so you pull in the video effect immersive VR plane sphere, drag that on, perfect, well, mm. and if you had like this situation where you have some text that's offset, you like that position, you can actually copy that. You can straight up copy that. So what you do is you you find that this, oh, I like that um, rotate projection on the VR plane of sphere. So you go into rotate projection on the VR plane of sphere. Oh no, it's, uh, is it X? Yeah. And you copy it. And now, same location right the simpler way to do that now I just did that so you remember how to create a title but the simpler way to do this if you want to create a duplicate is to create a duplicate um, you can't copy it gets it gets weird with this because it's like its own file well I think maybe it's here Duplicate. We'll attempt that. It's copy one. So that's very important that it's named something different. Okay. So now you've got this. So the problems start with titles. If you were to start doing this, if you wanted to go, oh yeah, that's good. Copy, paste, and see Control C, Control V, right? It pasted it. In there where this video was now there's no video there so that's one of the problems so you want to go to where there's no video and paste if you're gonna do pasting and then drag it paste if you're gonna do pasting drag it up you know you can solve this problem by having your video track be on like track three. Oh no you can't because that would be over. Oh yeah, just so you know, if you're new to Premiere, um, track one is the bottom layer. Track two, V2, is the middle layer. V3 is the top layer. Um, if nothing's in V3, two is the top layer. I think you get it. Um, yeah, so we copied Old Faithful. The benefit of that is that we you know, have the same fade in, fade out, right? The disadvantage, I think this happened when I, yeah, wow. This happened when I tried to copy this, right? Because the effect didn't copy with it, see? So what you can do if you want to avoid dragging everything in is actually go to VR Plane Sphere, copy it, paste, ta-da, 
So you can you can copy effects around. That's pretty cool, right? It's a useful tool. Um, and then this right here, this one is Old Faithful, okay? See, that's Old Faithful. This is Old Faithful. If I modify this, however, to Old Faithful 2, the problem is this becomes Old Faithful 2 as well, even though it's the, the original. So that's the problem with trying to copy-paste these things. They're all their own files, and when you modify them, you modify all instances of them. Um, and then you could add credits on there. We can um, make a new title. Oh, sure, it's title three. And uh, here's what you want your credits to look like. Um, you want like created or maybe title, right? So old faithful. You know, we'll we'll just use the last one and then and then go to credits. Created in the immersive media lab. Uh, just coming up with names. This is a friend though. <laughs> um, so then you can center. Um, you can make this maybe as big as you can, really. You want to make it big enough to fit. And, you know, we should change the size of this. Oh, we got a cough. Uh, we should change the size of this. Uh, this could be a little small, so maybe you want this to be bigger. And we'll just... Because that's, that's kind of the fine print. And your names, you can make them bigger. That's fine. So we will center again. Well, I mean, you have to want this uh, this font. You can choose like other good ones. I think uh, what is it? Minion is good. Yeah, and um, now you can do the same thing we did to the other title cards, or you drag it in to the timeline where you want it, let's say the uh, end of the eruption, or the geysers here. Let's put it at like, what, two minutes? Let me just do this as a one minute experience, because it's just one clip. I don't know what this clip before is. I think it's just uh, one I tried to show you. Yeah, it's just something I showed you. It's not like relevant. So you can start. Sometimes you can do a like a fade in. So we'll do video transitions. Uh, we don't want to do immersive. You can just do dissolve uh, to black and. You can extend this, and now it'll look like this. So it kind of, maybe you didn't see that because it's kind of small. It's a slow fade in, and you're looking at Old Faithful. And what's cool is you can do uh, other things with your text. Now that you have it, you can undo that move. Uh, you can press like shift enter and you could type in like Yellowstone Wyoming. I think it's in Wyoming. I forgot. Um, and you can just make that smaller. And there you go. And it'll it'll track back. Like it'll work here. And for your credits, maybe you want to, you know, clip out. Maybe you want to just keep it going, right? And say cut. This is the razor tool. You can just cut here. 
you can also press C. For this, you can also press V, so that's a little faster. You can just go between the two. Um, so V, let's just delete the rest of the footage. Uh, let's dip to black at the end. Uh, you don't really have to. So we could... So you see the problem immediately right here. We already taught you this. So remember, you just go immersive video, VR plane to sphere. Oh yeah, this is transitions. You want to go into um, effects. Immersive video, VR plane to sphere. And now you can see a problem here. Easiest solution is just maybe like detaching these two clips. So you can unlink them. You can pull the audio a bit longer and then that way the audio still kind of heard in the background. It's nice and atmospheric that way. Um, and there you go. So that's kind of like perfect, right? This is fictional. <laughs> okay. So now you've got, you know, like a one minute video of Old Faithful erupting in its majesty. It's a little distant, right? This is kind of going to be the experience of being in the crowd and what you can expect when you're there. So let's go back. I probably do this as a 2D thing, zoom in on it, you know. Uh, but it's nice to be like teleported there. That's kind of cool. Okay, so next step is export. So if you were to export now, it would default to the last thing here. If you had anything over here, there would be a lot of blank space. So what we do on the sequence here, this is called a sequence, is we press I, the letter I, and when we're at the last frame, we can go to out, um, and press the letter O. And you can do that by hand also by just finding the end of that clip and pressing O. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so that works right there. We could just cut a frame off to be safe. And then it'll end like that. So we can save. Always be saving. Let's save it as the right name because it's actually not that. It is something different. It is uh, Old Faithful. And let's just call it Render1. We can change the names later. I don't know. You say V1. So, you know, as you're iterating, you can make a V2, V3 by going to Save As and doing such. I'm sure you knew a bit of that, but it's good to review. I guess I could just give that I was, I was talking about this before, if audio is too loud or too quiet, you can adjust the gain to be louder. Um, you don't want to adjust it to be too high. Like, ex for example, if it says peak amplitude 18, negative 18.2 decibels, and I were to put it up at 18.5, uh, that would be above the peak amplitude. And you would hit like a point where it gets the loudest, and it would hit red. And when you redline, um, audio starts to sound like it just sounds bad. Um, it's probably this spike then. Yeah, it's that one. So, you know, you'd want to keep that down. Uh, if you have trouble with like little spikes like that being loud, you can normalize peaks. This does cause problems with the audio. Um, but yeah, you'd want to normalize probably like around. Actually, the peaks can go to like one. But that's the thing, like, you want all peaks to be there. That normalizes it. It brings up a lot of quieter things. You might not want that. So for just try adjust gain, and, and if that's still too quiet, you can normalize the max peak. And then if it's still too quiet, you can normalize all peaks to, like, something under zero. Zero is full volume. You don't want that. <clears throat> So now we export, and this is going to be where it gets a little uh, different than you might be used to. Um, so H.264, 
it's a bit more universal. This is more compressed, I hear you, but uh, the problem is that it's hard to decode without hardware that's made for it. So H.264 should default to that. And yeah, don't match actually. Do you need a high bit rate? Mm, no. Uh, let me let me check that for you. So hardware would be nice, but the problem is it's over 4K, so there is no hardware that does over 4K H.264. Um, what you can do is change the bit rate because it is absurdly low right now. So match source high, and then we'll see how that looks. And that is actually terribly low. You will not get a good video quality from that. So what you want to do is set this to, well, that's 4K is about 70, maybe. Um, you probably want like, like 140, and they can compress it lower. Um, we can make, and we'll just do 100, and then you can let this go up to 160. Um, and then this allows the video to just have more information. So when you upload it, um, it just plays with higher quality. Um, they compress it basically every time they take it in. So, okay. Um, another pro tip, if you are exporting for Oculus Go, you wanna like play this on there, you need to set the resolution lower. Um, and that's gonna be a little trickier. Cause right now it's at this here. Um, and it's going to be harder to change. There it is. So if you wanted to convert this, you have to convert in a ratio. So if you know, let's look up just 4K resolution. This is how you'd figure that out. So 4K resolution and go, okay, it's this resolution. So since these, blah, so since these um, should be standard, you do this and it changes. You want 2160. So yeah, if that's the ratio though, you want, you want to keep it that way. Um, so here you'll have, you know, a lower resolution. This is only if you want to export for like Oculus uh, Go. You'll need to crank that way down and bring this down so that it's manageable by the internal hardware. Um, but if you don't care about, you know, making a file directly for Oculus Go, you can just put it at the highest resolution by match source. Uh, this is 5.7K, and you can bring this up to a more reasonable uh, baseline of like 120 and 160 megabits per second, um, and that'll just work better for this because it's not 4K, it's 5.7K, it's almost 50% more. Okay, so then we can either queue or export. Um, if you want to keep editing, you can queue, but it may crash. <laughs> um, and if you want to export, you press this, but you cannot edit anymore. Um, but since it's hard to edit, we'll, we'll always probably just export and just, you can go get a sandwich. Uh, but yeah, this is, it just takes a little while. This is a one minute video, right? On here, it takes three minutes. On a MacBook, it'll probably take, what? 17 18 minutes um so yeah best of luck and uh yeah i hope you enjoyed this uh this is just how to make a quick 360 documentary of course you'll be doing more of the uh dips to black at different angles you'll try to shoot many more things and put narration over and under so when you get audio in you'll just drag the audio under 
Um, you can right click on the audio and you can um, change the volume up or down by decibels. Um, what are some other tips? Um, yeah, you can have sequences within sequences if you want to, you know, render effects and you don't want to deal with all that. I think you press Control R um, and you can render the sequence, the subsequence. Uh, so this, this is like a sequence, right? Um, this allows you to, you know, put, drag clips in, video in, graphics. Um, and then if you have another sequence that you make a subsequence, you can render some of the effects and uh, if I think it's through control R um, and you'll see the top of this bar, it'll be like this yellow before, but you'll see the top turn green. Um, can I move all this? No, I can't. But yeah, um, there are a lot of little things to learn about Premiere, but I hope you'll get it and we will be here to assist you. Um, uh, if you're not in this class, I suggest you enroll in it or just reach out if you need any help. There are also plenty of tutorials online. Uh, you look at Adobe's website, uh, Premiere, how to, there's forums, uh, people discuss, you know, how to do it. So yeah, thank you so much for, for joining us. And um, I guess I'll show you the end of this because we have some time. So I guess I can make some more notes. Um, so here, VBR is variable bitrate. Um, that means that it goes between this baseline bitrate and this maximum bitrate. And you want 120 to get a good um, amount of data without too much artifacting. Um, it, it doesn't. It gets less blurry, right? It's more more detailed. Okay, so now we've exported. Um, if you want to check where you've exported stuff to, this is, I could have changed this name to be better. Um, this is, let's call that old faithful. Um, and now we can play it. It's a gigabyte, so it's not small, but you know, it's a lot of information. It's all these pixels. And yeah, you now you have a 360 video made with Premiere, and you didn't even have to render in Insta360 Studio. Um, you can just drag it in after you've installed Insta360 Studio. Premiere can recognize this, and you can drag it in. And then yeah, this is a uh, just Windows TV and movies. And it, it, it does a decent job at like, you know, okay, reset to forward, right? Um, but you could put this file in, you know, any VR device you have. You could put this in like a, a video folder if you use Steam's pl video player. And yeah, it would, uh, it would be a VR video. You could also upload this on YouTube and it would become a VR video within a few hours. Uh, so that's probably how we'll end up doing submissions. Uh, we'll also likely have the, you submit a Premiere file. Um, okay, so that's something else, right? Because that involves, um, you know, submissions. So I, I think that's important enough to go over. So you can, I think it's Project Manager. Yeah, you can... Pick the pick only the thing that you're trying to show, right? Uh, you can collect files and copy to new location, or you can consolidate and transcode, which is a kind of a big bunch of files, and that's that's a little too much. This collect files. Uh, it's very important to use exclude unused clips. It saves a lot of file space um, on Tina's computer. 
when she downloads them. Um, and what's cool is you can calculate how big it's going to be. So it looks like because we excluded unused clips, instead of being 40 gigabytes to handle all these files, it's only 1.8. So that's great. So then we do that, and it all goes here. Users, Waterfall Documents, Adobe Premiere Pro. Users. So where, where that is is um, actually in here. It's not, it's not through that documents if you're in Windows. Um, so users, waterfall, documents, Adobe, Premiere. You can put it in an easier place, but this is where it goes by default. Premiere Pro, 14. And now we should have uh, a copied version of this. I'm thinking it's it's this copied old faithful here. So I'm just waiting for it to finish up. Oh, and you will have to submit this uh, likely in a zipped format. Uh, so what you can do is install 7-zip, which is a process, I know, but you could install 7-zip. It's a free program. You can add it to an archive. Make sure there's no password. Um, it's in zip. You can just do normal. I mean, maximum's cool, but it'll take it'll take a while. Um, so I'll just do that, and it's in the same subfolder here. And yeah, so that looks like it'll take what two minutes. It's not so bad. Yeah, it looks like it was already in a compressed format, so it's not really able to make it much smaller. But the benefit of this is that instead of having to upload 50 files on um, Canvas, which I don't think is possible, you can just put this on your school Google Drive, uh, first name dot last name, at sgsu.edu. You can put this on your Google Drive. You know, you don't have to pay the fee then for more space. Um, and then you can share that link with tina.karani at sgsu.edu. That's tina.karani at sgsu.edu. Okay? Look. There's Tina. So that way you can send it to her or whoever's teaching this class at the time. I'm pretty sure. She'll keep teaching the class in the future. Now it's the waiting game. But yeah, um, I'm pretty sure you get the idea. You put it on Google Drive and you share the link. So yeah, uh, that kind of concludes the tutorial. Um, okay. So I know it's a lot of information to take on. Feel free to rewatch the video, um, you know, but these will be useful tips when you're actually editing uh, the video. And I just hope that, you know, first time around, you just see it and get it. Um, but I know it's not like that sometimes, right? It's, it's, it's hard. And that's why we're here. We're going over things once or twice. And yeah, we're going to be learning it. So first it's this with... Insta360, the camera, uh, Insta360 Studio 2020, and we're also going to learn a bit of Pre Adobe Premiere Pro 2020, and you'll be seeing with 2020 vision. <laughs> All right, um, it's getting late over here, so I'm going to sign off. Uh, I enjoyed telling you this. I hope you add the uh, MCOM virtual worlds class. Um, it's going to be a great semester. We'll learn all about Insta 360. We'll learn about Unity and creating virtual worlds with motion control interfaces and, and virtual reality. So very excited. Um, see you all soon. And uh, I guess we'll go out to Old Faithful. Okay, so I think now I can conclude uh, 
this tutorial. So hope you liked it. And I'll see you in uh, later class materials and, you know, in class. It'll be great.